Hey, how you doing? Eric over at SoCal Cigars here. So today I wanted to do a quick um, kind of review on a cigar. Um, I didn't really plan on doing a lot of cigar reviews on this channel, but I found that in certain situations, a cigar review has really helped me out to either move forward with getting a cigar or to not get a cigar, um, or maybe not buy a box of them at one time, maybe just get one or two uh, to try them out, and that's paid off pretty good for me. So being able to go and search reviews on different kinds of cigars, you know, has been pretty beneficial. So I figured it might be a good idea to do to do that for what I find are maybe the more unique cigars out there or uh, something that's not just everyday standard stuff. So um, what I wanted to talk to you today was uh, going to be about the Candela um, or, you know, the green the green wrapper that you uh, see out there um, it seems to be more of a unique cigar um, but apparently that wasn't always the case I think it was around 1958 um, Candela wrappers I mean some basically in in the United States pretty much everything everyone smoked green cigars I mean this that was for a long time from the late 50s to pretty much the early I believe 1970s um, one of the primary cigars being smoked in, in the U.S., in America, was a Candela wrapper of some sort, a green cigar. Um, I've seen that there's a couple ways that these are done. Um, one of them is to harvest the leaves early and do, to kind of start the process before the leaf has a chance to get rid of all the chlorophyll. So it's maintaining more chlorophyll, which gives it a different flavor and a different color. Um, I've also heard that it was also based on, on the method of curing. The curing process would help it to maintain that. And I'm sure it's all based on chlorophyll, obviously, because if, you know, look at, like, a, for example, kind of a weird example, but um, asparagus. Have you ever seen, like, the little jars of white asparagus? All they're really doing is they're growing those with no sunlight so that the um, photosynthesis can't take place and there's no chlorophyll. That's why they're white. So the chlorophyll by photosynthesis in a plant is what makes it green um, so anyway I thought that was interesting to think that that at least from what I read um, a, a green cigar was extraordinarily common and then it kind of in the in the early 70s it kind of fell out of favor and for the Connecticut wrapper and so the kind of the standard cigar in the US went from being this green color to what we now know as the light mild tan colored Connecticut leaf and that was um, obviously still popular to, to, to today um, but the Candela wrapper apparently made its kind of resurgence in around the 1990s um, but again for me I mean I mostly only see these and again it's kind of s silly but like green beer green everything else like around St. Patrick's Day things like that <clears throat> you start seeing these things really getting pushed but but that being said, now, within the last couple years, um, I'm starting to see these available all the time. Um, it used to, like I said, it used to be almost like seasonal that you would find these, but now it seems to be kind of a staple. I don't think it'll ever make a resurgence like it did back in the late 50s to the 70s, but um, it's definitely a unique cigar. It's definitely not everybody's go-to, um, but apparently it was at one time. So... What I have here is an acid, Cuba Cuba, um, Candela. So anyone that watches my videos or knows me, a uh, huge acid fan. There are definitely other brands out there, Baccarat. There's a lot of other um, green cigars you can get out there with a Candela wrapper. But I obviously, for me, gravitate right to an acid. Figuring if I'm going to smoke one of these, I'm going to smoke one that I know is going to be good. <coughs> so... Recently, I was talking to someone about cigars. I believe it was at a cigar shop, and I don't recall exactly where it was. Um, <clears throat> but I had bought one of these. It was the first time I'd, I'd ever bought one because I had seen them. Uh, I noticed that you couldn't get them anymore. Then all of a sudden, um, they started coming on the scene again. And like I said, it seemed to be cyclistic based on holidays or seasonal you know, reasons. And so I really wanted to get one and try it out. 
and see what, what all the noise was about with these things and see if maybe it was something to put into my regular rotation, not just here and there like for a holiday or you know whenever they happen to come out. Um, so I was talking to the guy and I think it was a cigar shop owner and I said, you know, what, what's the deal on these things? You know, what can I expect? And he says, it's going to sound kind of weird. And uh, he goes, but it sort of tastes like hay. He goes, that's kind of the best way I can describe it, is it sort of tastes earthy like hay. I have read other um, in a, I've read other people's views on these cigars, and they've thrown in their cedar and pepper and stuff. I haven't really gotten that off these cigars. Um, for me, it's the hay reference, as odd as that sounds, especially in the, when you're talking about cigars, it seems pretty accurate. Um, when I first lit that up, I was like, wow, that... <laughs> That sort of does taste like hay. It's real grassy and earthy, and uh, it's really uh, it's really a good flavor. It was pretty unique to where I ended up buying like a box of twenty five of these things. Um, so now it sort of has become one of my regular cigars. Um, I will tell you one thing I've noticed about these cigars, though, is that um, even when I keep them in my humidor, which is ideally you know sixty eight sixty eight for me, like the perfect humidity setup, um, these things are still hard to keep lit. Um, they almost seem like they have a level of moisture in them that most cigars don't seem to have. So it does seem to really be high on the moisture content. I'm not sure why. Um, so I find myself having to relight a lot. Not the end of the world, not a big deal. And definitely uh, still worth it for me to, to be able to smoke these things. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and smoke one of these. In fact, actually I'm right in front of my bike out in the front of my house. Um, had a demo days at our dealers, so uh, I was uh, one of the road captains, so we, we help uh, run the groups of people trying out different Harleys through, it was like an 11 mile loop. Um, and so, you know, oftentimes when you come back from a nice ride, you want to have a cigar. So I figured why not take advantage of uh, my little ride today. In fact, it's the first time I've ridden in about four weeks because I actually strained my back. So I've been, uh, staying off the bike for about a month so I was definitely excited to get back on the bike today um, and so now I'm definitely excited to have a cigar after a uh, nice day of riding so again I'm gonna go ahead and V cut this little sucker nice little V cut love that cut shake her out um, actually got a kind of a cool lighter I like this little triple I like how it's kind of wide it's almost like a blade flame. It's actually kind of cool. So anyway, like, like we've already seen, we're going to toast the foot. Like we've talked about, see, it's smoking a little bit and you'll see it's just, just changed color to being dark, which is going to help me light this thing and uh, make it a nice clean light. Yeah, the first thing I get off this thing, sweet, um, earthy, it is, I'm telling you, you feel it right away, you taste it right away, it's a grassy, uh, very natural, it's uh, kind of creamy, sweet, I know some of the sweetness is coming from the wrapper because it's an acid and I know that they have a tendency to, you know, put a little bit of sweetness on the outside of the wrapper, um, but even the smoke, what you're getting from it is really mellow, sweet. Let me get a better light on this thing. Yeah, I'm not necessarily getting some of the other flavors that I've read people getting. I'm not getting any cedar or pepper. See, I don't find these to be peppery because I'm actually not a very big fan of spicy, peppery cigars. Um, which is kind of funny because some of the more well-known cigar brands and cigars out there that are really high rated. I just am not a huge fan of that peppery. I think that's why I lean towards acids and uh, the infused cigars because I really like the kind of the sweet side of it. <clears throat> and this really lends itself to that. It's, I mean, these things are beautifully constructed. The wrapper on this thing is perfect. It's actually a cool, really cool color. Um, but I'm telling you, the flavor on these things is really mellow. Um, it's not harsh. It, uh, 
again, really kind of sweet, and you, you get that grassy, grainy, earthy feeling. I mean, there's really no other way to, to say it. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, for being... I don't know, for being what it is, it's really kind of a basic thing, but it's it's fairly complex in the flavor. I mean, you get a lot out of it. Um, <clears throat> it's definitely not like a single note cigar. You, you're definitely get, I'm getting a lot of flavors. Um, yeah, but it's it's been a, a really cool cigar to get into my rotation. All right, well that's my initial assessment. Um, let me get into this thing a little bit so you don't have to just sit there for an hour watching me smoke a green cigar. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a sec. I'm going to get a little further into this thing and uh, let you know where we're at at that point. Hang tight. Okay, I'm probably maybe a good 15 minutes into this cigar. And I'm starting to see what I was kind of talking about here. I'm finding that it's hard to see maybe because I'm kind of in the best light, but... Okay, you can sort of see there. You, you can sort of see that it doesn't look like it's burned down very far, but you're seeing kind of a charring on the outside of the leaf. It's because this cigar is actually burnt down to here. All this part in here is actually burnt. But it seems like there's there's so much moisture being held into the in the wrapper that this cigar, I mean, it's hot all the way down here. So a, probably a, a double what that ash is, if not more, inside that wrapper has already been burnt. Um, and it's just not burning the outside. And I'm finding, kind of like what I've told you in the past, um, kind of the rule of hitting a cigar every 45 seconds to a minute. I was testing that. So if I hit this thing every 45 seconds or so, it, it's lit, no problem. Um, but now I purposely, once I saw this burning the way it is, I purposely stopped smoking this thing for probably the last three or four minutes and let's see what it does. It's out. So, I'm going to have to relight. Hmm. So you can see a little tunneling going on. Um, so that's the thing about these things. I think you just got to understand, and it's how I'm feeling about it. Um, there's a lot of moisture in these wrappers, it seems like. Not going to keep me from smoking these things. They still taste great. I still like these cigars. I think they're really good cigars. Um, but I would argue that it has definitely got more moisture than most cigars, at least what I've found so far. And I've smoked several brands of Candela's, not just Cuba Cuba Acids. Um, I've had a couple, I think two other um, Candela's. And I found it to sort of be the case. So like I said, you can see it's kind of tunneling. Uh, let's roll this off a little bit. I've got to keep hitting it. And what I think I figured out too is, <clears throat> remember I told you a couple of minutes ago that I'm not tasting a lot of pepper out of this cigar, but I sort of am now. And I think what I'm determining is it's not so much of a peppery note to it. What it seems like to me is it's because I'm having to hit it to keep this thing lit, I'm sort of almost having to hotbox the cigar a little bit. Cover dashes here. Um, and I think because I'm having to hit it more than usual, than I normally really would. Because a lot of times for me, I don't hit a cigar every 45 seconds on the clock. I'm not sitting there watching my time going, okay, time to hit it again. Um, a lot of times you're chatting and you're screwing around and doing whatever with your friends and you're not just sitting there puff, puff, puff. Um, your average cigar, you know, you can sit it in, in the edge of an ashtray for, for five minutes and you pick it up and it's ready to go. So... What I'm finding is with these, I think there's a little bit, a little more babysitting involved. I think you have to keep hitting it. Um, it. 
I don't think it's a detractor though. I don't think it's anything that would keep me from smoking these cigars. Obviously, I just you know I recently bought a box of them, so I still think they're awesome. I still think they taste great. Um, I think it's like anything else. I think you just have to know going into it what what to expect. So with this cigar, either expect to have to light it every once in a while, or expect that you've got to keep hitting this thing. Um, and like I said, I don't think the peppery flavor I'm getting is uh, actually a peppery note. I think it's actually more that I'm having to hit this thing more often than I'd like, and it's it's kind of. I think the pepper I'm tasting is a little more bitter than pepper, if that makes sense. You know, if you've ever seen someone that's hot boxing a cigar and they're heating it up, you know, you don't want to heat the inside of the cigar up more than you have to. And I think you know, when you do that, that's when you start getting that kind of bitter flavor. And I think that's what's happening here. Um, but again. Not not so bitter. Again, I don't want this to be taken wrong either. It's not so bitter that I wouldn't smoke them, and it's not so it's not so hard to keep lit that I I won't continue to smoke them. This has become one of my go-to's. For example, when I ride this thing, um, and I got my little five-pack Herfador, um, this now tends to be one cigar I always throw in it. I and I'll tell you, I tend to throw one of these. I tend to throw a uh, Is Little Soul. I tend to throw uh, a Kindred Spirit Acid. I tend to throw a uh, the um, Steel Horse. Um, I think it's a Steel Horse. It's one of the CAO um, kind of the biker series. They've got the little handlebars on it. I can't remember now. Sorry, but um, I think it's called a Steel Horse. Um, I usually throw one of those in there, um, and then my last cigar. Sometimes I'll throw like a Cuban or something. Um, but but again, all the things I'm describing about this cigar being hard to light and and having a lot of moisture in it and having to hit it more often by no means keeps me from smoking this cigar. I still think they're fantastic. Um, so in other words, I don't want you to watch this review and go, well, based on what you're saying, I wouldn't want these things. I would almost argue that that I do like these so much that none of those things keep me from smoking it. Where uh, maybe a different cigar... If I had those kinds of things come up, um, I might say, well, forget it. It's kind of a, too much hassle to smoke these cigars. Not not keeping me from smoking these whatsoever. And yeah, now that it's lit again and I'm hitting it again, it's smoothing back out. It didn't maintain that bitter taste. Um, so I don't think that I've heat, heat, heated the inside up so much that it's going to maintain being bitter. It's already back down to being creamy and smooth and grassy. So I think the cigar, once you relight it, um, it, it actually quickly recovers itself. And it's still a great smoke. Um, like I said, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't let anything I'm saying keep you from, from trying the cigar. Um, because trust me, there's plenty of cigars I've smoked where I would literally say, I think this thing's horrific, I wouldn't get it. I would argue that this thing is... To me so good that regardless of the any difficulties i'm having i'm still going to smoke these things as a regular so hopefully that makes sense to you and you, you see what i'm saying about that in other words i don't want you to see this video and go oh man you're you're basically saying these things are horrible not even close i'm saying they're great so yeah really good um so I would argue that if you're going to smoke one of these, maybe just hit it on a regular. Hit it on a regular basis, like I'm doing right now. You know, when I'm sit making sure to smoke this thing once within about a minute, um, it's staying nice and creamy and, and full flavored, and the, those all the earthy, grassy notes, it's all staying really consistent. Um, it's not changing flavor a lot. To be honest with you, it almost seems like it's getting a little more mellow as I go. Because now I'm probably, you know, somewhere between three quarters and half on this thing. Um, yeah, and it tastes really good. Um, no complaints. So, that all being said, let me continue to get this, thing, get this thing down to maybe, you know, to the wrapper. Give you kind of my last uh, thoughts on this thing. And uh, then at that rate, you can make your own decision. But um, so far, I, you know... I, I highly recommend you at least giving these things a shot. This would be an ideal cigar to go to your brick and mortar, buy one of them, give that a go, and then determine what you want to do from there. It's exactly what I did, and it panned out for me that I want to continue to smoke these as my regular um, rotation. 
um, maybe you'll try it. And the, the issues that I am having for you are detractor and it's enough for you to say I don't want it. Not for me at all. I think that the flavor is worth it. I don't think that it's such a, a problem that I wouldn't continue to buy these cigars. I think this will, for the most part, maintain being something I always have in my humidor. And it's going to probably be one of my go-to grab grab for the for the road cigars um, for the foreseeable future. So um, anyway, let me get a little deeper in this thing, and uh, I will be back and let you uh, know my final thoughts on this Cuba uh, Cuba Candela. Hang tight. All right, well, you can see I've got this thing smoked down pretty far. Um, so what's, uh, what's my final thoughts on this cigar for you? Um, my final thought is it's, it's a fantastic cigar. Don't let the issues I've had scare you. I'd rather do a, an upfront, honest review with all the problems I had visible. No problem. I'm not going to hide it. I could easily have redone this video and you would have never seen any of these things. But I'd, that's not honest and it's not the kind of review I would want to see. You know, it's still a great cigar. It, uh, and when I was thinking about when I usually smoke these things, a lot of times it's before a ride. And sometimes we're meeting at 6 o'clock in the morning, and this will be our breakfast cigar. We'll have this and a cup of coffee as we're sitting around waiting for the other bikes to show up because we're road captains. We show up early. Um, uh, so we're usually waiting for the rest of the uh, members to show up. So we'll have a cigar in the morning or maybe after the ride in the afternoon. It's not the type we're sitting around like a, a fire at night after dinner and having whiskey and chatting. Um, I would maybe leave that for a cigar that you know you can set down for five, ten minutes and still be lit. I do that regularly with, you know, Hemingway's or Davidoff's. And uh, you can pick them up after five minutes and you're not worried about whether they're still lit. They always are. Um, so these, I would argue, are a little more work, a little more babysitting. But I would argue they're well worth the effort. I would not hesitate to try one of these. In fact, maybe do yourself a favor. Go to a brick and mortar. Pick up one of these and give this a shot. Um, if you see it like I see it, I take all the issues I've had with this cigar and none of them, none of them deter me from wanting to smoke this thing just because I like the flavor so much. It's well worth the effort. Anyone that's a, also like a tobacco pipe smoker, you're tending all the time. You're tamping and you're relighting and stuff and you're you're poking at the tobacco you know we're used to i guess cigars that are just pretty much always perfect and they just smoke perfectly so arguably yeah there's a little more work involved in this cigar but i um, i would argue that the flavor is worth it i would not uh hesitate to go give one of these a shot so uh, i would highly recommend doing that just at least one um anyway hopefully this is helpful like I said, I'd rather give you an honest review, even with all of its flaws showcased. Um, uh, like I said, I could have easily grabbed another cigar, redone this review, and you wouldn't have seen any of that stuff. But it would have been doing a disservice because I tend to have issues like this with everyone I smoke. So I just know ahead of time, going into it, that this is going to be a little more work than your average cigar. Well worth every second of it for me. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this is... Uh, not, it's not meant to turn you off. It's meant to just be honest and let you know that this is how the cigar is going to be. Um, anyway, I'd really be curious to hear if you've had a different experience because so far for me, every single one of these I've smoked and that I've given to friends of mine to smoke because they've been interested in trying them, have had trouble keeping them lit um, because they're not hitting them, hitting them regularly enough. And also, um, they've also gone into wanting to buy... Uh, these on a regular basis and smoking them on a regular basis because they really love the flavor and again it's not been a detractor either for them so they've been really happy to be turned on to these and uh, to smoke them on the regular as well so anyway um, all that being said go buy one give it a try Eric Silka Cigars like subscribe you know all the stuff to do I will see you on the next video take it easy